Packers and Broncos. <sighs> yeah, I'm still bitter about it. Do you have anything to say first? Because I'm going to say a lot. <laughs> Good, buddy? <laughs> you okay? No, no, I'm not. It was pretty bad. It was damn bad. I mean, it it was Aaron Rodgers' worst game of his career by far. But like not only like worst game of his career, but worse than every quarterback this entire season. I probably worse than every quarterback the last five years. It's pretty damn bad. Broncos defense. Is the real fucking deal. That's all I got to say. Well, yeah, yeah, they are. But here's what I don't fucking understand: Broncos win overtime against the Browns. They almost lost to the Browns, and they they destroyed the Packers. That that's baffling to me because. I think bef before this week, uh, you know, if you compare Packers to the Browns, you'd be like, oh, well, Packers are better in every way, shape, and form. But apparently not. <laughs> uh, should I get into it? Should I, should I really? I'm going to try to make this as short and sweet as possible because I don't want to run up like a half hour of time. <laughs> uh, and we already wasted, I think, like two minutes or whatever of me sulking but here's number one that makes me mad about this entire fucking game i hate don capers and every single time ever since the super bowl in 2010 everybody's been talking about oh this is don capers defense this is so like right. this is all about don capers and it's, it's his name is thrown out so much don capers is the luckiest fucking defensive coordinator, I think, in the NFL. The reason why is because a lot of people don't remember this about Don Capers, but before he was signed on the Packers in 2010, he was the defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. You want to know what the Miami Dolphins were that year in 2009? They were dead last in everything. They had the worst points against them per game. They were worst rush defense. They were worst pass defense. They were worst special teams in the NFL. And for some reason, Ted Thompson thought this was the guy that was right for the job. <laughs> and then they won the Super Bowl that year. They did. But they didn't win it because of his amazing play calling. They won it because they had a very young and very talented team. Much like kind of what the Vikings have going on for them right now, to be honest. Or uh, the Raiders are a very young and very talented team as well. Now, on top of that, congratulations that you guys won the Super Bowl. I love the fact that you won it five years ago and everything. But you remember 2011 when Packers went 15-1? and one? You want to know why they went 15-1? and one? Because Dom Capers has been riding Aaron Rodgers' coattail for a long-ass time. You're fucking lucky that this quarterback and this offensive scheme has just been outscoring opponents. Not that your defense has been stopping opponents. Your offense has just been outscoring them. The end. Your play calling has shit. Your players are actually pretty damn good. It's just that you were calling the wrong goddamn plays. Now let's focus on the Broncos game. Packers, in my opinion, might have one of the best blitz defenses in the NFL this year. I, you saw it. You saw it against yeah. Seattle. You saw it against Kansas City. You saw it against the Bears. You saw amazing blitz. I mean, it was nonstop lethal put pressure on that quarterback you sack him eight six six to eight times per game that's pretty damn good that every single game you're sacking a quarterback six to eight times with a couple turnovers that's pretty damn good you even saw it against the nfc championship game last year against seattle 
First half, they were all over Russell Wilson. All over him. Second half, didn't do shit. You know what this game looked like? The second half of the NFC Championship. The entire fucking game. Because you have Dom Capers sitting up there in his booth saying like, Oh yeah, we have this all handled. You had, you, you could should have blitzed Peyton Manning all fucking game. But you know why? Because they don't have a run game, which apparently they do against the Packers. C.J. Spiller goes for over 100 yards. When the hell has he done that before? And then on top of that, Young gets Peyton Manning. Hey, I have great respect for Peyton Manning. I love the guy. It's Sheriff Peyton. How can you not like Peyton Manning? I, I love Peyton Manning. I have nothing but respect for him. But guess what? He is the oldest quarterback playing right now. And if you're going to put pressure on him and you close his pocket you're gonna force him to scramble peyton manning can't scramble big spoiler alert peyton manning can't scramble put pressure on the guy put pressure you know what if you're gonna do one-on-one coverage against emmanuel sanders and uh demarius thomas if you're gonna put pressure on peyton manning you got a 50 50 shot that he's not gonna throw a good pass towards him and if you're not going to put pressure on him, you got a 100% chance that Demarius Thomas is going to take it downfield, which is all he did all fucking game. Why is it? Don, he, they did this against San Diego, too, which pissed me off. But they were no, forced. no, you're right. They, they, didn't get to, they didn't get to Peyton at all, Hogan. They didn't? He, uh, he had his best game. I know he didn't get a touchdown, but, I mean, that was – he's the reason I got in the red zone. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they really didn't pressure Peyton really at all. And that's the thing is, your guys are set up for blitzing. I mean, you got a great front four. Clay Matthews is honestly one of the best inside linebackers this year. I mean, like not maybe not the best, but he's definitely top five. This guy is an animal this year. I mean, I know he kind of dropped out, but he's have he's having a hell of a year this year. And you're not going to put pressure on Peyton Manning. And all he did was zone defense. Why the hell are you playing zone defense? And on top of that, when it comes to halftime and your zone defense ain't working, then fucking change your strategy. They didn't change anything, offensively or defensively. They're just like, no, keep with the plan. Just, no, we're going to keep with the plan. Well, your plan's not working, so you got to do something different. And I'm blaming it mostly on Don Capers. Now, I know offensively there's a lot of shit going on, too. You know, on the complete opposite side, like I said, I think that Packers have one of the best blitz defenses that they didn't utilize. Also, what Packers have is probably one of the best hurry-up offenses in the NFL. Also, didn't do that either. I don't know why. Uh, I'll stop at that because otherwise I'm just going to keep on going. But holy shit. They, pretty much everything that they shouldn't have done, they decided to do. <laughs> And I don't know if they did it because they're trying to throw the Broncos off guard or something, but it certainly didn't work. And what I, I already said it once, but it just pisses me off that they didn't try changing anything. Nothing they tried to change. When clearly, they, when it's like fourth quarter and you're down by like 17 points, maybe you should change. Guess what? It worked for the Colts. I know they didn't win the game, but at least they fucking tied it. Right. They made it a game. Um, all that said... Hey, at least it's only one loss. Right. But you do have to go and play Carolina next week. Right. Exactly. Two incredibly good defenses back-to-back. That's going to be a tough outing. I mean, it really is. I will say one thing positively. I'm not going to try to defend Aaron Rodgers too much because, I mean – it's not a secret I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. I'm, I'm fucking called Cheesehead for a reason, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm going to be a realistic Packer fan here. Yeah, the whole offense played like shit. Aaron Rodgers played like shit. But I'm going to give him one big benefit of the doubt. When his pocket closed and he was getting blitzed, he's the king of scrambling. Not yeah. scrambling like... Uh, Cam Newton scrambler or even a Colin Kaepernick or Russell Wilson scrambler but I'm saying he can get out of the pocket he can move and he'll still try to make a play out of it and if it was any other quarterback he would have been sacked 10 times that game and I think he was only sacked once I mean he had also had a fumble yeah that, that didn't get to him too many times yeah I mean oh they they're putting the pressure on him big time but they didn't actually hit him really right. too many times and I give a I gave him that benefit of the doubt 
if it was anybody else, like literally anybody, they would have been annihilated. And he still tried to make plays out of nothing. And, you know, and he's still the king of it. You know, he's king of the north and he's king of getting out of the way, <laughs> I guess. You know, I think I think this was the first game that he really felt not having Jordy Nelson. Because he didn't have that guy he could rely on to throw the ball and, and win a matchup. He just didn't have it. I sort, out, I, I sort of agree with you. I sort of agree with you, but I also disagree with you because, you know, between James Jones and Randall Cobb, he should have still had an open guy. This is the first game that Rodgers looked very uncomfortable. And by uncomfortable is that, you know, when he, when he rolls out of the pocket and instead of just, you know, trying to chuck it downfield, even the middle of the field or down the line, even if a guy was under man-to-man coverage, he just didn't take the chance. Like, I mean, I know he didn't throw any interceptions, but you didn't take a chance. You know, if this guy's yeah. one-on-one, I've seen it countless times. And, I mean, obviously to Jordy Nelson, and that's where I do agree with you. I mean, there's so many times where if there's a one-on-one on Jordy Nelson, he's going to thread that needle, bomb it downfield, and you're going to rely and trust that Jordy Nelson's going to make the play. And most of the time he does. But James Jones has been known to do it too. You know, there's been plenty of passes where. Look, I know, I know James Jones is having a good year, but I honestly think that's more Aaron Rodgers than James Jones. I mean, that's just, uh, I don't, he's not. I mean, he was cut from the Giants. Like, I know they've got a good connection and something good in sync there, but James Jones is not a number one receiver, at least not on any other offense. He's not. True. But he, James Jones had a pretty good season in Oakland when he was there for. He did, he did. So he's I. He's a good guy, but he, he really. He's a good receiver. Like now, look, this means, isn't the reason they lost. No. I'm not having Jordy Nelson in the reason. No. Lost. I'm just saying it was the first time that you really could tell that he needed a, a nightmare matchup, but he just didn't have him. Flat out, did not have him. Yeah, I, I guess I'll see it because truly Rogers doesn't really have his go-to guy anymore, right. and not that really. Rogers ever had a go-to guy because he likes to spread the ball around. But at the same time, if you need someone to make a play, Jordy was always the guy for him. And I think you're right in that aspect that this is the first game where, holy shit, it, we kind of miss Jordy Nelson now. And Everyone has a bad game, though. Right. I mean, and... I mean, it was a really bad game, but everyone has – it's not like – I think it's going to be an anomaly on the grand scheme of, like, the season. Right, you know? right. And that that always happens to everybody once. I mean, hell, even if um, whether the Patriots or the Bengals or even Carolina, whenever they get their first loss, if they do, but I'm assuming someone's going to get one loss this year at some point, it's always going to be against... Shit, last year, Brady had a game that was so bad, he got benched. And everyone said he was done. Yeah. And they won the fucking Super Bowl. So they, it's exactly. Not, it's not the end of the world. It, it's not. It. I mean, it sucks during the week, but it's not the end of the world. And um, I know we're going to run over time. And I'm going to say this one last bit because I was thinking about it earlier today as I was stewing on this game still. Um, There's one thing that Aaron Rodgers is really notorious for is whenever he loses, he hates losing. And the next week after a loss, especially a big loss, he's red hot on fire. I mean, he he definitely knows how to buckle down. He watches the tapes. He goes through all the motions. He goes through everything. And he is so dead set and motivated that next week that I'm expecting something big out of him. But at the same time, what I'm really hoping that this doesn't happen is, is this loss so detrimental to him that he suddenly is going to have a big mental block because of it. And maybe you won't see him do anything great the rest of the season because he just can't get over this slump because of uh, this one I game. I don't think so. And I will say this. He might not bounce back at the strongest game next week because it is a, it's a hard matchup again. It is. It really but is. After this two-game stretch, I think he'll – if he doesn't come back and return to form and burn the, the Panthers, then he probably will come back within two weeks. And, you know, he damn well better because the Vikings are only a game back now. Exactly. 
And so if the, if the, the Packers, North is interesting. <laughs> it, it's gotten much more interesting. And, you know, I said this in the very beginning. I felt that the Vikings were going to get the wild card spot a, or a wild card spot. Well, they're definitely showing that they, they're fighting for it. And they're not fighting for a wild card spot. They're fighting to win the division. Fight for the division. Yeah, 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 they definitely are. And, hell, they're good enough, too. I mean, realistically, they are good enough. And uh, I think overall, despite this game, I still think Packers are an overall better team only because they're more experienced. I mean, because Vikings are young and talented, but Packers are more experienced. And I think they're just overall that like slightly better team. But, you know, if Vikings are going to come out and catch Packers on a bad week or with their pants around their ankles, I mean shit they might take that division and they definitely want to and that's something i think uh i think everybody in green bay is kind of realizing right now right and hey on the flip side even though denver's playing as good as they are if they falter at all i mean the raiders are right on their ass too in a very similar situation with the young hungry team true true uh, so. um you know and i think to recap all this uh you texted me during this game and you actually made a very excellent point that Broncos look scary. You know, they their defense looked incredibly good this entire season. But if their offense continues to produce what we saw, ten, or you know, this last week against Green Bay, that's a Super Bowl team for sure. If they did that to Aaron Rodgers, I have no doubt they can do it to Tom Brady. I don't care what anyone else says. You know, I think the AFC Championship right now, is going to be one last showdown between Manning and Tom Brady. It might be the most epic showdown between the two of them ever, you know, in history. It might be one of the the best to watch. And, hell, I would love to see it. And I I really wouldn't mind seeing Broncos in the Super Bowl one last time with Peyton Manning. I mean, if anybody... Since he might have something to say about that. What's that? (laughs) That since he might have something to say about that, though. Good point. That's a very good point. You know what? <laughs> hey, it, in, despite all of that, AFC Championship doesn't sound too unrealistic being Cincy and the Broncos either. No. It's a three way three way tie right now. Yeah. Anyways, Anyways I know we're way over time, so let's stop it here. Uh, hey, Packer Nation. Give me some feedback. Give me some love <laughs> about this. I mean, I I think we all just need to maybe give each other a big group hug, pat each other on the back, and say, "All right, you know, uh, we'll get them next time." Um, if you're not a Packer fan, it, it, Broncos fans, I don't know, rub it in my face. I guess why not? I'll take it like a man. <laughs> uh, and you, again, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Links are in the description. Uh, I had to go on my small mini rant and, uh, you know. There was nothing mini about it. (laughs) Just like what I heard.